OK, uh, so today my talk is going to be directions of the web. If you understand Chinese, the four words say 四面八方. 四面八方 means the all types of directions. Yes. Um, it's going to be a very quick learning talk, enough for uh, my, my, my esteemed speaker here to take a breath, uh, calm down, and like stop sweating. It's OK, fine, moving on, everybody sweats. Uh, OK, so um, because this is like semi-official, uh, this is me, and this is the stuff I do. I must mention that I represent Malaysia. Yes, that's, that's the most important thing. Um, OK, I'm also this thing called, like, as you can see, I feel obliged to do some semi-marketing things to, for things that are relevant to me. So please bear with me for a little bit. So there's this thing called Mozilla Tech Speakers. Um, basically, they want to sort of support local community speakers, uh, developers who want to do technical speaking. So they are now open to, for people to apply. So if becoming a speaker, um, the bar very low. So if you see, anyhow you can stand here, right? So if there's something interesting to you, um, there are resources, they offer like training and things like that. If this is something that you feel that you're interested to get into, uh, applications are open at this uh, website, or you can just kind of talk to me, I can like uh, send you the link and stuff like that. Who is employed, guys? I am not. I'm not. I'm not a part employed individual. Uh, uh, there is a company paying my CPF, so uh, all people in my family are very happy. That, ah, somebody is paying for your retirement. Very good. Uh, so I recently joined a company called Nexmo as a developer advocate. Nobody knows what a developer advocate is. Even my own company, don't, don't, did, like in Singapore, didn't know. I spent the first three days explaining what I do. Um, so, so basically, developer advocates only present themselves in companies that their product is a, is a product that developers use. So my company makes like communication APIs, so they need developers to talk about it. Um, we also make a lot of cool stickers, uh, and yeah, I have to work on this. I just joined for two months, so uh, if, you, if you talk to me again in six months, I'll probably have a better speech about my company. Uh, but okay, moving on. Oh, joke, I never update slide. We are, we, are, we are technical difficulties. Pause, 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 brother, pause. Uh, never push, never push. The moral of the story is must push. Never push, so now I must load from local. Oh, I have stories about that that went wrong. I will, I will, we, will share, we will share one day when I have no speakers. Okay. Hopefully this one is the other one. If not, then oh holo. Okay, try again. Ah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's look at some old pictures. This is a drawing of the. <laughs> and the hey, hey, hey! Why you laugh? Why you laugh? Don't laugh. Be serious. Be serious. I'm very serious. I prepare slides, guys. So this is a picture of an analytical engine by Charles Babbage. It's a it's a very early iteration of what a computer is. Uh, this is a Z1 by Conrad Zuse. I cannot pronounce. Uh, Germans, please. Uh, Enlighten me on how to pronounce this name. Okay, what he said. Um, <laughs> this is uh, a, again a very early prototype by this uh, computer scientist. There's, I think, his parents' living room. Uh, this is a state diagram of a Turing machine by uh, Alan Turing. So this was probably about 50s. Um, this is the Colossus was uh, designed by Tommy Flowers, used during the war. And uh, this is also an ABC computer by someone called Vincent Atanasov and Cliff Berry. See, all black and white. These are very early iterations of computers. But what do all these early computers have in common? Made in Angmore countries. <laughs> ah, see? So, in most Angmore countries, right, their writing system is top to bottom, left to right, like German, English. Um, but if you look at the world as a whole, the writing systems can go in many different directions. So like the Arabic one is right to left. We got the, Han the East Asian ones that can go vertical or both. Um, there are some very interesting ones, Inuit up, up top, uh, Eskimos, there's Russian. So different writing systems, different... Um, different directions. But on the web, generally, the default is top to bottom, left to right, largely because, like I've shown in all the uh, beautiful pictures of ancient computers, uh, 
this digital age was pioneered in countries whose writing systems were horizontal top to bottom. So naturally, we all got very used to it. Like when we see something that is uh, on a screen or digital, we kind of accept that the default is horizontal top to bottom. Um, but of course, it's called the World Wide Web for a reason. And there are a lot of initiatives that want to strive to be able to represent the world's writing systems accurately on the web as far as possible. So a lot of these in the early days were, were constrained by the limitations of hardware, but I think we have reached a point where hardware is relatively, um, how to say, uh, good, cheap and powerful, that, that there are a lot of things that can be implemented. So specifically to the web, uh, a lot of the things now on the web, we use Unicode to encode our characters. So for Unicode covers a lot of things, but in terms of directions, um, these are links, so if you are interested in this sort of thing, it's quite a, it's a very, very detailed technical document that explains how, uh, and it's not, just for, it's not just for browsers, internet per se, it's just for any software application that uses Unicode, how they handle bidirectional. Because can you imagine if um, you mix Hebrew text with uh, English text or Arabic text with English text. Um, if you've tried it, because I have done that for some of my previous talks where I, I had to give the talk in, uh, I shouldn't say this on camera, uh, Malaysian passport. Um, I built demos that use um, these uh, right to left languages and if you try to type in, the, the browser actually does this quite well. If you type a Hebrew um, line of text, right, it will start from the right automatically. And, but funny things start to happen if you have a mix, if you mix uh, left to right and right to left. And for the most part, the computer can get it right because of this Unicode bidirectional algorithm. There are like rules attached to, to the, the nature of each character, etc., etc. There's also um, Unicode vertical text layout. But this is a bit less, it's, it's much shorter than this because for vertical, for vertical text, it's something that um, I think the Unicode Consortium agreed that it can be handled in another way, which is through CSS. So if we do want to do vertical writing um, on the web, there are CSS properties that can do it, and it's, called, it's specified in the uh, writing mode specification, which is pretty much what I talk about a lot of the time. So these are, the, these are what dictate, um, I, do, I don't want to say alternative, but non-default writing directions on the web. So today, is, is this is going to be a, like a lightning talkish thing, uh, but I just want to cover how you can change direction of the layout of your uh, content or your websites um, through CSS, basically. So the first thing we're going to cover, uh, like I mentioned, is writing modes. So the default is this, horizontal top to bottom. So it's like, uh, which one? Uh? Oh, it's not, because it's default. I didn't, I didn't have to do anything. Anyway, uh, but if you, the alternative properties are vertical RL, which is right to left. Um, I think it's the first one, so it's right to left. And, or you can also do left to right. Um, this is specific, for, from a language perspective, Mongolian, the, not the Cyrillic one, the actual Mongolian script, right? It's vertical, but it's read from left to right. So this particular property really actually is targeting, for, uh, targeting Mongolian. Um, the rest of the East Asian languages, your Japanese, your Chinese, can, will go with vertical right to left because we read it from right to left. Um, and you can also combine with transforms because as you can see, right, even though it's right to left or left to right, all the text have been sort of rotated uh, clockwise. If you have to rotate it anti-clockwise, then you probably have to do some uh, transforms. But in general, it's quite possible to rotate text uh, even though you are using, uh, say, Latin-based language like English, from a, from a graphic design perspective, vertical text has been around for quite a while in print. Um, and it's just that we couldn't do it properly uh, on the web. Like, I, I think early on, some people just like type one letter, then 
enter, type another letter, then enter, type another letter, then enter, which is, you get the visual effect, but I mean, from a, from a semantic perspective, it's quite bad. Uh, but because now we have these uh, writing modes, and it's now, since 2012, it's almost like fully supported across the board, except for Opera Mini. Uh, one of the nice things you can do is, you, if, if you don't want all your letters to lie on the side, there's a text orientation property that allows you to sort of like switch things uh, up, right? Okay, wait, change font size a bit. Uh. Yeah, so you can sort of do something like this. So if you want to design, um, I guess, you, you know, if you go to like Hong Kong or maybe if you go Penang, more denser uh, cities, they'll have those like neon street signs that have this vertical text effect. This is totally doable and your text can still remain, you know, um, you can still highlight it, copy it and whatever. So I think even though you don't design for East Asian languages specifically, there are a lot of things you can play around with from a graphic design standpoint with the writing mode property. So that's for con like individual letters, right? But on a broader, from a, on a, in a broader perspective, in terms of the layout of the items on your web page, there are also ways for you to lay out your text. And actually, Flexbox is really fun. I think most people use Flexbox for very practical reasons. Like, oh, I have, a, I have a navigation bar that I have one item that I want to kick to the right. Okay, I use Flexbox. You know, like, very nice, um, respectable uh, reasons. Um, but I, I, I think not a lot of people play around with the uh, different combinations. So what we have here for Flexbox in terms of directions is that well, first of all, we have wrap and no wrap. So if you do a no wrap, I'm not going to go into the details of Flexbox. Um, this could take all day. But if you don't wrap by default, and if I don't apply anything on my Flex item, the default start value is uh, 0, 1 auto. So it's just going to try to squish everything onto the same line. But the moment I start wrapping, you'll notice that there is an order to how things are flowing. So in this example, I use numbers, right? So there's also a property, uh, sorry, there's also a value other than wrap called wrap reverse, which will let you start your content from the bottom. See, so instead of uh, top, left to right, top to bottom, it becomes left to right, but bottom up, right? Um, there's also this property called flex direction, okay? So now what flex direction does is, default is row, so again, default is a horizontal uh, sort of a flow, but you can change it to column, and in, instead of flowing uh, horizontally, it now flows vertically. So let's go back to red. So, if I just do column, then it goes. It starts from top to bottom, left to right. So I think you can notice now that because there are two different uh, properties that you can play around with, right? You can sort of mix and match the values and end up with a lot of different directions. So now if I do right reverse with column, it becomes right to left or, uh, vertical. And row and column, that's two. Wrap and wrap reverse, that's two. But if we, we throw in writing modes into the mix, right? you end up, so in this sense, because writing mode affects the layout of the content, uh, the individual characters, right? You can also adjust the, how your text within your flex items is displayed whilst still uh, changing how your layout looks. So long story short, there are many different possibilities. I hope this slide is updated. Yes. So. There's also left to right and right to left languages. So mathematically speaking, two options times four options times two options times four options equals 64 possibilities. But as you noticed from the demo earlier, some of them end up with the same result. So like if one fine day you are very bored with your life, and I'm sitting around here, I have nothing better to do in my life, you can try to attempt to hit all 64 combinations. I'm just saying, it's an interesting way to spend your time. <laughs> And the last bit I want to cover is uh, grid. Because with grid, there's also the ability to change the flow of your layout. By default, again, it's left to right, uh, uh, top to bottom. Um, but there's this particular property called grid auto flow, which is kind of fun because it, by default, it's row. If I change it to column, 
uh, I will have to do some adjustments here. But you can also change it from a horizontal flow to a vertical flow. Um, but what's nice about grid auto flow is that it also affects the density of packing. So this particular property takes another keyword, which is the dense keyword. Okay, let's, let's sort of like do a before and after. So A, B, C in uh, alphabetical order. If I put in the word dense, you see that eh, H got inserted in here, N, T. That's because when you introduce the dense keyword, the algorithm tells the browser to try to fit in if there are any items that can, can fit into any blank space. It's like go ahead and, and, and sort of adjust, adjust forward. So I guess I can, I can see, I can see uh, from an art direction perspective that so, this sort of um, behavior would be, would be ideal for, for a lot of things. So that it's a JavaScript free sort of option for, for sort of uh, laying out your items. I think this, 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 this particular property is pretty useful. Um, It's a bit, okay, I understand it's a bit odd to just suddenly throw this, uh, this particular property without explaining the whole thing of grid. But the thing about grid is that it, it offers a lot of different options that we never had before. Um, it allows us to control space like, we've never, like we never could before. Because previously, everything had to line up next to each other. But with grid, and now I'm on, because now I'm not, specifying like the manual placement properties but grid actually does both of them very well it does the auto placement meaning you give it like a general instruction like oh i want my items to flow vertically but like pack everything together and the browser does it for you or you can also like be very specific like i want item g specifically to be on the bottom right corner yes you can do that with grid also um, so I think it's something worth exploring if like you you keep you keep hearing people talk about grid, talk about flexbox, and then you're like, eh, nah, nah, like floats are working fine for me. I'm like, I mean, just it's that the, this is the sort of thing that you get more, you get a better idea of the possible use cases only when you use it, because you would have very unique ideas about how you want to use it. Like I can tell you all the funny ways that I use it, it may not be relevant to you. But when, as you try around, it, will probably, it, it, it could sort of like spark some, you would be able to use grid in a way that other people would never have thought of. So just, this is just my like spiel to um, encourage you all to try, try out these kind of newer things. And support is actually very good, like 80% now. So quite safe, quite safe. So I'm just going to end off in, uh, with this very... I went for an Asha exhibition at the science, like art science like a, a while ago. I thought it was quite nice. So, just to a reminder that directions are not by default horizontal top to bottom. They can go like all over the place. Um, and with that, I'm done. I hope you have... <laughs> ten? Good. Okay, so uh, yeah. So as you can see, I put in some effort because I made slides. I didn't stand up here and anyhow leave point, point, click, click on uh, articles. So uh, I would like to welcome our, uh, our next speaker, uh, Mr. Lim Sehao.